Y'all gotta check this conversation out that I have with my guy Kyle, Superhuman Fathers on Instagram. We dropped some serious heat and we went in deep with emotions, so stay tuned for this one. Let's go. What up, my dude? We're here, bro. Yes, we are. We're here. Made it. That's what we need, more superhuman fathers, man. I love that saying. Yeah, I got a lot of shit when I put that up. They're like, who do you think you are? And I'm like, I'm striving for this, man. Like, yeah. I, you can't ever be the superhuman father, just like I can't be Jesus. Like, but there's a star that I'm headed towards. And if I, if I ain't headed towards it, then where, where the hell else am I going? Yeah, exactly. You, know? you got a mission that you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, man, I've seen your transformation. You, you showed the world how to free yourself from a lot of shit. It's fucking beautiful, bro. Thank you, brother. I appreciate the love, man. So let's start from the beginning. You told me a little bit about what industry you're in and how you transitioned to where you're at. Let's start from the beginning. Yeah, man, I, I, I was raised Mormon and went on a mission, man. I did the whole, like, white shirt tie thing, you know, riding the bike with tie flapping behind. I remember Just those dudes, yep. Knocking door to door selling Jesus like like a motherfucker. <laughs> like, hey, you're on a obsessed, mission. Dude. Yeah, literally, literally on a mission. And back then, I, I found something. And I didn't realize that I found the gold back then. And the gold was just losing yourself and being of service. Like, that was like, back then, there was like this vibration I found of just like becoming a monk. And just like, I didn't watch TV, no girlfriends. I, I, I talked to my family on the phone every six months. So like, I was just in the work. And the work was to bring people to Jesus. And I didn't realize that back then I was being prepared for what I do now in a big way. Because I felt that. And then I got home from my mission, met my wife, like we do, the Mormon style. It's like you get home from your mission, you're like, all right, well, next step, find my wife. And you're like, you, uh, are we going to do this? I'm like, yeah, all right, cool, let's go, you know? And luckily, we threw our cards on the table. It worked out. We've been married 22 years now, five kids. It doesn't always work out that way. But um, I just started working as a teller at a bank. I didn't have any college or got shitty grades in school, too. So they were like at the bank. I got hired because I had a friend who was from church. And the lady's like, all right, so put, you got to put it in the savings account. And I was like, what's that? She was like, oh, no. You don't know what a savings account is? So I get this job at the bank. I don't even know what a savings account is, man. They didn't even know. No clue, That's bro. That's funny. And then just kind of worked my way up in the bank. And I was good with people and worked my way up. We we did pretty good. They put me in a desk upstairs and was one of the top sales guys for a while. And was living large. And 2008 came and just pulled the rug out from under me. Lost everything, man. Got my man. house house is foreclosed on cars repoed bankruptcy i think at the time we had two kids one on the way moved in with my wife's parents my wife's like what are we gonna do now i was like i'm gonna be a fucking fireman she's like what i was like yeah i'm gonna go be a fireman you know everybody talking shit they're like you're too old it's too competitive you gotta make it at that time when the economy drops all the government jobs get inundated so i like took i'd go take tests in a big stadium with like thousands of people and i wasn't super good at math so i had to study a bunch of math because i was like failing the tests in the beginning and went to paramedic school started volunteering as a fireman worked on an ambulance making like eight bucks an hour went on welfare for a while and was just like fuck dude what happened to my life and then played that game and three years Worked my ass off, got hired in Thornton, Colorado, and that's where the real party started. That's where I went into a, a tribe of fucking savage firemen that I walk right in. They're like fresh meat and just busted my ass for like a good three years until I fucking turned into a man. There was a restructuring of my mind that needed to happen that like was so epic in the firehouse. At the time, no fucking way. That sucked. But... You don't get away with anything in there, man. You can't lie. You can't fucking hide. 
you, all your mistakes out on the table, the way you walk, the way you talk, you just get your ass clowned. And so with that, you know, you, you start looking at yourself internally and figure some stuff out. Fireman for 15 years. And uh, at the tail end, I had gotten really into fitness, like kind of middle way through and had a massive body composition change myself. And the guy started asking me about, how'd you do that? You know, at the time we, I think we had four kids and uh, they saw the relationship with my wife and how I raised my sons. And they just started asking a lot of questions. And here I am, these guys I really looked up to for a long time. These are my heroes. Now they're coming to me for help. And I was dumbfounded about it. Like, holy shit, the tables have turned. And so I started coaching guys. Had a trainerized app, everything. I got it from my wife because she had Warrior Mom Fitness. And I just started putting guys in the app and just training guys at the firehouse for free for years. And then wow. uh, my daughter, accident, full accident. We were done. Four boys. My wife was going to get her credential to teach. And my we're in the hospital. My, my daughter's going to be born that day. And I'm looking on my phone and another one at Wes's transformations pop up. And I was like, shit, I thought I had my shit together. These guys are even more ripped than me, dude, by far. I was like, fuck. So I just messaged him. I was like, all right, dude, I'm in, whatever. And then went on his, like, starting program and uh, just went all in. And then just being around West, man, like, shifted my mind again. A whole new recreation of myself. Like, why are you not building a business? Like, why are you holding back in any place in your life. Like, I thought I had it. You know, I was working at a destination fire department. I was like, I'm there, bro. And then hanging around West. He's like, why are you a fireman, man? You have a lot more to offer the world. I was just like, wait, what the fuck? And uh, so I just started delving into business, built a supplement company. And um, and at the end of that year, Wes was like, bro, you need to coach people. And I was like, well, Wes is asking me to coach people. I'm like, bro, I don't want to compete with you. He's like, there, you ain't competing with me, motherfucker. He's like, I'm going to build you. I was like, I don't know, man. And he's like, dude, he said the words to me. He goes, you do the most, Kyle. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? He's like, I watch you with your kids. I watch you. You're a fireman. You build a supplement company. You skate with your kids. You surf with your kids. You do jujitsu. You're ripped. You lift weights every day. You eat right. You and your wife have a great relationship. Your kids like you. He's like, you do the most, man. I work with a lot of motherfuckers. You do the most. And I'm like, fucking Wes Watson saying I do the most? I was like, wow, this guy's been flattering. But dude, he don't, he don't lie. You know, he lit my ass up a lot. So, like, he don't lie. So, to hear that from him, any, any self-doubt I had, he just breathed belief into me. Because I know he ain't going to say that shit unless he believes it. I was like, okay, I'll borrow this. And so um, I already had Superhuman Fathers as an Instagram just as a way to expose myself because I was struggling being an irritated father, coming tired home from the firehouse, yell at my kids too much, you know, and just I just didn't want to be an asshole dad. You know, we all have those moments where you're just like, why am I being such a dick? And I just wanted to kill that part of me. And um, so I made the Instagram to hold myself accountable, got a little following put a story out and like 30 guys joined like that. And I was like, holy shit, did we just create something? And then within a year and a half, we had 700, 700 and hundreds of transformations and testimonials. And I'm sitting here going like, like almost blinking my eyes. Like what just happened? Like I took a breath and now I'm leaving the firehouse and just dumbfounded at what what just happened in my life so Dude, here I we are that. i love that story so let me ask you did you uh start with wes on the personal development side that's what it sounds like you did first yeah yep and then he taught you the game of macros yeah the code yeah and i like knew, i knew the macros you know but just like wes he's like how deep can you go with this shit bro like He's like, you're holding yourself back. And in my head, I was already there till I till he would he spelled it out for me and showed it to me. 
And I was like, oh man, I'm not even, I haven't even started in life yet. Isn't it crazy that we get to a certain age and, and then we think like, well, this is just it. We're already in our forties. This is just what I become. I hit the pinnacle, yeah. but then there's something, yeah. there's a switch that goes off inside of us. Like he said, a quote that's I still, that lit a fire in the mind. I've been watching him since like 2019, 2020, but I wasn't looking into the personal development or anything like that. I was just watching him. I like what he had to say. He's an ex-con. I'm ex-con. So I'm like, fuck, I resonate with the guy. I even messaged him back in 2020. Like, hey, keep pushing out your message, homie. I love what you're saying. And then he said, create the man you admire and give him to the world. And that fucking hit me deep. And I said, you know what? Hey, babe, because my wife knew Macro. She's already been coaching. I said, babe, I need to know the fucking code. I need to know the blueprint. I'll watch this. I'm going to flip myself. I'm going to turn into a different yeah. animal I'd never become. So I fucking honed in, man. I put I took my ADHD and honed that shit into that. It went fucking all in. That's our superpower, bro. Yeah, yeah. Now we're older. I'm, I mean, I'll be 50 next year. You know what I'm saying? I'm a stroke survivor, suicide survivor, so I tell my story. I don't hide nothing. I don't hold nothing back. I want people to know there's hope, man. Just like what you're preaching, you know? Same thing. I show my wife. I show our love, our dynamic. Has our marriage been fucking roses and peaches? All No, of course not. There's bumps along the road, man, just like you. I'm sure there's been some bumps along the way, too. That's part of life, Hell though. yeah. We still have bumps, bro. I yeah. had a big bump on Saturday. <laughs> ah, that's fucking funny. <laughs> I hadn't been yeah, taking man, her out, boy. Oh. I, I, yeah, well, like, like in my head, I try to, like, multitask, right? So we, yeah. we, you know, we'll take trips to, like, go to events or go to speaking engagements or whatever. And I was like, this counts? But I didn't realize, like, to her, that did not count. She stressed no. out got to be ready for this event she's like she's like not free you know so for a few months i was just like being like hey we've been together it's good and i didn't realize like tension was building up for her and then finally took her out last weekend and literally just melted i was like shit man 22 years of marriage i'm still trying to figure this shit out hey man they don't give us no goddamn playbook brother but listen one What's thing that? that works for my wife and i is we do a date night once a week we try to always make it a point or we have our cheat meal on Saturday, but we always spend like that quality alone time because work will drive you to yep. the ground and then you don't want to grow apart. That's one thing we, we talk about in our podcast, never grow apart because it's easy. You, it doesn't matter if you're married, you can start growing apart. Yeah, and it's like insidious and it's real slow and insidious and you don't notice it's happening till like you're apart and you're like, ah, oh, shit, what happened? Yeah. It's like, because like you're saying, the ADHD, bro, like we'll obsess over shit. Like I'll obsess over the movement like crazy. And even all my conversations with her are because she's got her own business, so it's real easy to talk about business, and I'll flow with that all day. But she doesn't want that shit all the time. So, like, I have to make specific times, plan the Friday night date nights. I have to plan the weekend getaways, and then when I go, I got to just, like, not add any stress, pressure, nothing to the moment, and just let it flow, which is very fucking hard for me. I know what you mean. Sometimes the same way I get caught up on my phone and checking instagram because we work off our phones you don't even know who's dming you i'm yep. constantly keeping up my stories i have a business coach too yep. so he's always hammer those dms man get on it because so, i don't, I don't want to like it's easy to fall off real easy you starts getting kind of going this, i gotta pull back this way so you're not going you always want to be holding in and, and and then you got then you got your all your body stuff going on then you got your marriage and then and then i got the kids and, and then you have all the clients and you're just like trying to just keep on the path. And the second you take your eye off the ball, bro, you start veering in the in, in one direction and stuff starts to fall apart, which is like, I mean, I think why you and I found coaching, too, for ourselves is like we need somebody to, to be like, hey, get back in line, bro. Yes, we get we get we, we lead men, but at the same time, we can get lost, too. We're human, bro. That's one thing that's for sure. It, again, we all got to be held accountable to even us coaches. People think like they look at us like, yeah, we work out. Yes, we're disciplined. Yes, I get up at 4 a.m. Yes, I do cold showers. But shit, I got to talk myself inside every day. Every day is a new day. Just because I yep. did it today don't mean I'm going to do it tomorrow. I got to talk. I got to start fresh every morning with that conversation in my head. Like, all right, here we go. New hey, day. Isn't it crazy, too, how that shit, we don't even give ourselves credit for that anymore. That's just standard shit. So the bar raises. The horizon moves. And then, like, we're like, well, I'm oh, cool. I woke up before. It's like, yeah, that's what I do. Like, I don't get credit for that shit anymore. Mm -hmm. When I first started doing it, I was like, oh, shit, I'm killing it. But now 
what used to be impossible is now unacceptable to miss. This is different, but this is this is transformation. This is the change of the heart and the mind where it's like now we see what the next level is for us. And that's what puts us in a very powerful position to lead men to that place that we found so that they can get there and, and see from that that new mountain. OK, now where can I go? So this this is a fun game for us because we get we get to stay ahead of the pack while they're nipping at our heels. You know? Yeah. I like what I uh, I'm sure you f you follow David Goggins or know who he is. For sure. So I like what he said recently. He goes, okay. He goes, once you climb to the top of that mountain, then what? What do you do? He goes, his advice, go all the way back down to the fucking bottom and start all over again. Like, I love that. Never get comfortable. And I like Wes says something like that too. Like, he lives in a state of discomfort. And I'm like, mm-hmm. You have to because it's easy. I, hey, listen, I've, I've, throughout this process, there's times where I started slipping a little bit, slipping just a little bit, or all the holidays. Oh, 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 I got to pull myself back in. Like, again, yep. we're human, so we got to pull ourselves back in. Yep, yep. And then I like, I like the game that's, like, what I realize is, like, the more honest I am about all of my shortcomings and my struggles with my guys, the more they bond to me, the more, the, the more they trust me, and the more we can actually do this shit together. And because um, in the beginning, I, I would really beat myself up if I started to slip a little bit, you know, because your expectations get so damn high. But it's like this is just part of the game, dude. And we know we're not quitting. We know we're getting back on track. So it's just and, and just being I didn't realize I could just I could just be real, like 100 percent real. And I don't have to be perfect. I just have to be honest. And and then just keep keep that just savage attack going, you know. A lot of the guys they'll they'll be inspired by just the the fastest bounce back they've ever seen, you know. It's like a little slip back on track again. Like, no, I ain't staying down. I'll, I won't even stay down long enough for most people to even take a breath. But holding the line is hard. It's supposed to be. And how how fucking rad that it is this hard. Like, I love that it's hard. I love that building this business is impossible. I love how, how insanely difficult it is, one, to get your body right, two, to keep your marriage together while you're getting your body right, and building a business or multiple, like in your case or my case. It's like it's the most fucked thing ever, and yet it is possible with this, like, just savage, aggressive obsession that is so fun to play. Guys are missing out, bro. They're missing out on this game. What else? What the fuck else are we going to do in life? Like, sit on our hands, dude? Like, I, I don't get it. Like, we're dying. We're slowly dying. Time is wasting. You're, you, like, you, you hit 50. And you're like, okay, shit. I'm fucking halfway there. So, now we get to live the second half like a motherfucker. Like, now we know so much shit. We know what we want. We know what we don't give a fuck about anymore. We're not afraid to speak our mind. Like, we're free, bro. It's fucking great. Liberating. Yeah. Yeah. I love being an old fucking man. I could, and you know what? I could tell your passion. I could tell that you enjoy not just servicing yourself, but servicing others. Because I always say this, say this is uh, if we could bottle this feeling up, Right here, bottle it in a bottle, sell it to people. We'd be billionaires. They only knew how good it feels to be on this side. Because one, it's challenging to flip ourselves. That's a challenge. Itself. But two, to flip another man and change his mindset and get him away from vices, drinking, yeah. drugs, whatever case may be, which a lot yeah. of, I'm sure you encounter a lot of guys, so do I. That's yeah. like fucking damn near impossible, you know? But it's fun to do that. It's fun to flip their mindset because later on, they're so grateful and thankful, like, wow, you saved my life. And we're saving yeah. lives. Not just aesthetically, but physically and mentally, we're saving lives. And right now, Let's talk about the, uh, the big dark elephant in the room, about mental health, man, because, you know, I suffered through that. Like I said, I'm a survivor. I'm coming up on my five-year anniversary. So how good does it feel with, for you working with people who have really bad mental health and turning that around? Dude, especially the guys that have had therapy. They've been on meds. They've tried everything in the book. They've done medicine journeys. And then, and, and then somehow through the process of being part of a tribe of guys that are just as fucked up as they are, and yet they freed themselves, gives them hope. And then 
with, within the group is like this level of honesty to where like there's no shame in the game here where guys are starting to spew these dark truths that they they just don't tell to the world because they don't fucking understand. And so they've got this group where they can just be fucked up where they're at. Where are you at? Here's me. And we're like, all right, cool. You're on the path, bro. That's fucked up. <laughs> like, you know, like whatever happened to him, you know, like crazy shit. Like, I mean, damn, we, we have guys that'll be, that, that'll just come out with it. They'll be like, dude, I was molested as a kid, man. I never told anybody. And this is my favorite move, bro, bro. In the, in the zoom call, I'll be like, everyone raise your hand who's experienced this. <laughs> Fucking half the dudes on the call raise their hand. And when you watch the guy just break into tears, he's like, fuck, I thought I was the only one. Like, no, bro. No, the world is a fucked up place. And you are not alone. And then I'll pick out guys who are crushing it. Like, hey, what, what, do you, what do you feel about what happened to you? They're like, I don't give a fuck. Doesn't define me. Doesn't even matter. It built me. Made me who the fuck I am. And then you watch these, this guy just light up. Not only is he now not alone, but he has hope. He sees the future. And he realizes that all the bad shit that happened to him is his fucking superpower to go crush life. And those moments are when people make massive trajectory changes. And I live for that shit, man. Like, to watch a guy's eyes change. Man, I love that, brother. That hits deep because I'm part of that tribe. I know. Never been yep. molested, but I've been, you know, I've, I've, I've been through my fair share of shit, traumatic shit, you know. Mother tried to yep. commit suicide with her kids. I've been to prison, grew up in gang culture. Street. Just been, I've been my fair share of shit. Again, none of this poor little woe me. My no. wife says something that was really interesting. I love it, and I live by this, too, is turn your pain into power, motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Like, turn that shit, make you a fucking beast. Because I said we all have that savage inside of us, but you got to believe it. And a lot of times, how you look on the outside is how you feel on the inside. So you don't feel like a savage. You look at the outside like, damn, I'm just this broke-down, fat man, ashamed of myself. But guess what, man? You could turn it around. I don't possess any special genetics. What I do possess is the willpower to fucking go on and to flip myself, not to give up. Because you said we're only here once. That's it. And I never wanted to be average since I was a kid. I've been working out since I was 14 years old. I never wanted to be average. I wanted to stand out from the rest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love it, dude. Because, because like, I see you and all the shit you've been through. And you're what you're doing is you're giving men permission to live an epic life. Re and, and rewire the stories that they've been telling themselves. And all this guilt and bullshit shame that they build up and they tell themselves, which is all fucking lies. And you're like, look what you can do. And then you, you liberate them by showing them the way that no one else could. Because if you didn't go through that shit, how would you show them? So now it is your superpower. And, it, and it's the one thing that matters most in this world is giving that gift to someone else. To me, that is everything. Above everything in this world, I want more than anything to, to watch a dude see that. And change his life. I don't know why I give a shit so much. I don't know why. I'm glad I do. Like, to me, it's a great gift. I know why. Because what you did in your past, when you're a Mormon, you were speaking the word of God, Jesus. You had a calling back then. And you're using that calling now. Just in the, just delivery is different. But it's the same delivery. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Whether it's religion, whatever it is, you're using that same that same passion, that fire you had back then. You're using it now. That's why you're passionate about what you do. And it does. It feels good as a man. I feel good. If I could save a life, man, if I could talk a dude off of a ledge, I feel good. Because I've been on that ledge. I know what it feels like. You know, I, part of me is like, damn, why did I do that? I wish I hadn't. But in a crazy, sick way, I'm glad I did that. So I could talk about it. I'm, I'm alive for a reason. The universe kept me around for a reason. I shouldn't be here. But it kept me around. So I have to speak on this. And my wife told me a long time ago, before we even started the podcast, she was like, you're going you're gonna to tell your story someday. And people are going to listen. It's going to help others. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm, I don't want to tell nobody my story. I felt shameful, like a loser, like a low life. Like, who does that? What kind of loser does that? What kind of low life of a man tries to take his own life? That's losership. But you know what? we are all got dark fucking demons inside of us, man. For me, it was a pill addiction that got me. I was highly addicted to Xanax, and it fucked my mind up, you know? It took me to a, somewhere I've never been, you know? So I speak on it now. I'm not ashamed of it no more because I want to help others because other people can resonate. Uh, again, like you said, you're not alone, brother. There's a tribe of us fucked up guys out there. So, and it's okay. It doesn't define us. 
Yeah, and I, I, well, well, the, the crazy thing is because you come, count, you came from the darkness, you can take a guy and you can go there in him with him and show him to go sit in it. Don't be afraid of it. And once you go in there with him, you sit in there with him. Now you can leave and he can go back on his own now. So he can go deal with that shit. But the guys are so terrified to even look at it that they can't ever move on. That's why they're so fucking stuck. They have to go in back into the fucking darkness and deal with it or they're never going to be free. And so especially a guy like you, dude, like you can fucking go all the way with them. Like, no, I'm going to make you look at it and we're going to deal with it. And then they're like, hey, I'm still alive. I'm still fucking breathing. I actually feel relief. I feel better. Perfect. Like, this is your, this is your path to the light. You got to go through that shit. You do. You got to face your fears, man. You got to tell yourself, you know what? You, you, you step up. You stare at it. And you say, you know what? Fuck you. I'm still here, motherfucker. What's up? You know what I'm saying? Same thing. When that stroke came for me four months ago, I had fear. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to sit here and act like I was tough. I was scared. I was in the hospital like, holy shit. Yeah. What's going to happen after this? Am I going to be normal? Am I going to bounce back? But I told myself, I said, you know what, Mike? I had self-talk. Like, you talk all this mindset shit online and this and that. Now you got put to the test. Let's see what you could do with it. So I told myself, like, now nah, fuck this. I'm bouncing back. Watch this, world. I'm not ready to, to go yet. You know what I'm saying? So I love that. I love those, those that get hit in the jaw, get dropped, and get back up, man. I'm, I'm, a, I'm one of those dudes just keep getting back up. You can drop me. Like Rocky said, it ain't how hard you get hit in life. By how hard you can get hit, get up and keep on fighting. I, I live by that, man. I wish I could tattoo that somewhere on me. That's me right there. I love that. I thrive in that. Bro, you had a stroke four months ago? Four months ago. Four <laughs> months ago, bro. I was in the hospital. Yeah, Dude, I was in my in family. The the, I've been in the back of the ambulance with a lot of stroke victims that didn't come back. That's crazy. I lost my cousin at 40. Same thing. She had a stroke at work. 911 ambulance. She made it to the hospital and succumbed at the hospital. My father at 58, he survived. He's a stroke survivor. Never was the same. The crazy shit is the last, the last time I had a stroke, my wife, I was at home. I had one when I was training. Didn't go to the hospital two days later. They found it on the MRI that had a stroke. Okay, cool. Went home. Everything was okay. About a week later, in the middle of the night, I have another fucking stroke. And I shake my wife like, babe, I think I have another one. She calls 911. They wheeled me out of there. I tell the ambulance, dude, hey, give me a barf bag. I'm about to barf again, throw up. Ooh. And then she told me, later on, confess, like she thought that was it for me. Like that might be the last time she sees me alive. And I was like, really? Hell no, I never had no fucking doubt. Fuck that. I'm one of those dudes I keep, my body will fight for me, man. I don't know what it is, if it's overconfidence or what, but I think because I built this machine since I was a kid that I know like my mind and my body will fight. You know what I'm saying? Versus a lot of these guys that aren't ready for war, like we talked about earlier. A lot of people ain't yeah. ready for that. And that's what happens. They succumb to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I've seen a lot of people succumb to it. Like, I've watched I've, I've watched a lot of souls leave bodies. And I always thought of, wondered about that, you know, like in the movies where they're like, where they're like, hang on. You know, like, like if there's a, a decision point where you can, like, decide to let go, you know, there's something there, bro. What's, what's that like, man? I'm curious because I never talked to nobody who's been in that profession and actually seen people, you, you basically see the energy leave their body. You know what I'm saying? What's that like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's, in the moment, it's chaotic because it's like, it's, still, it's not quiet. I'm not like, I'm trying to save them. So like we're pumping on their chest and putting needles in them and giving them meds and shit. So there's a lot of chaos around it. So I, I never really got to see like it just like slowly happened. They're either like dying or they're already dead, but um, I don't know. It's it's weird. I, I always said like when I was in the firehouse, running calls, I could kind of put a wall up of not give a fuck and just do my job, and uh, cause I was like protecting myself from all this fucking weird shit that I'm seeing. So I'm like, you know, and then we just like firemen, you you just protect yourself. You joke about it and shit and whatever, but um. It was weird going into coaching because you can't protect yourself. If you protect yourself, you don't connect with other humans. So there is no protecting yourself in this side of work. In that side of work, I could just block it off. And, but it, I can't help anybody if I protect myself in this game. I got to be wide open, 100% open, vulnerable to fucking attack. Yeah, but I, I, I think that shit, you know, 
I still have dreams about some weird calls and stuff that every once in a while what I'll uh, wake up in the middle of the night just like <laughs> like gasping for air or some shit or I'll hear like a the the tones have a certain tone to them or the beepers and I'll hear that at like the grocery store or something I'll be like you know just like on edge it's like you hear it for so many years you know damn that's some traumatic shit you you ever hear them like I'm sure you've seen it where it bothers you, where they're literally fighting for their life, but you know, like, this is probably the end for them. Like, you oh. know, they're fighting, but you know, like, this is not going to make it out of this one. Yeah, like, you you start, I mean, like, because you'll see them, like, because you got them on the monitor, too. So you're, like, filling them with fluids or whatever. Maybe they got gunshot wounds or whatever. You have certain ones, you just know, like, if a guy blows his face off, it's like, it's probably probably not gonna make it and you're like trying to innovate the hole in his face and shit and like trying to get fluids in him but you're like if he lives like what kind of life is that so you're just kind of thinking like i hope this dude dies but it's like your duty to try to revive him but what's what's his life gonna be like with no face or shit like that you know you get a lot of suicides uh, a lot of suicides yeah a lot of suicides um with, with gunshot and then a lot with like fentanyl and shit some of those are suicides some of them are just fentanyl you know but that's like super that's crazy My, mine was with mine was with xanax i tried to swallow over a whoo it's hard to talk about man over 100 pills of xanax slammed a big bottle of tequila Fuck. and i slammed a syringe of drain yep. on my vein i guess i don't know i guess i didn't hit oh. the vein right or was it my yeah i tried to take myself off real man it wasn't a cry for call it's the real deal Cause I knew once the drain hit my heart, it was over with. I saw some on TV. That's how I got the idea to do that. Yeah, bro. And again, only someone who's felt that to that level can empathize to that level with someone who's in the middle of it. Man, that's deep. Fucks me up. Gets me like teary because, you know, I almost widowed my wife. She didn't deserve that from me. You know what I mean? That's what hurts me the most. Yeah. I didn't even say goodbye until I loved it. I just left the house when they did my thing. Yeah. And how crazy. How crazy the, the guy that's sitting here on the podcast, who this who this is, is not that guy. That guy did die. Yeah. I basically had that's a second the, chance at life. That's why I go yeah. hard. I posted a dude on my Instagram recently. He's in a wheelchair. He was able-bodied, and he had a... Sp- Spinal, I don't want to fuck it up. Something happened where he lost the use of his legs. He could kind of use his arms, but he's confined to a wheelchair. And I posted on my Instagram, I did a quick little interview, and he says, you know, just because I'm in this wheelchair doesn't mean I can't do shit. I do shit with my mind. I have a strong mindset. He goes, I'm the mindset disruptor. And I go, and he told me, people don't realize how lucky they are to get up, able body, to be able to go to the gym, work out, even go for walks, but don't do that at all. It's crazy. You're here on earth. You've won the gift of lottery, but yet you're fucking racing to the grave. That's what's happening today. I feel like everybody's in a race to see who dies the fastest. I've already lost many childhood friends to the bottle, to drugs, some suicide. It's, it's nuts. Like, we won the gift of life. Again, I got my second chance, so I'm going to fight at this life even harder now. Yeah, and then if we stop our shit, we don't get up, we don't go to the gym, we start treating our people poorly, we start going back to the vices, we'll end up right back in that fucking spot again. So, but now we know. So it's like, well, what the fuck else are we going to do? There are no options here. When I don't want to do that fucking leg day, like, I know the depression and the anxiety that's on the other side if I decide to take the easy road. And I'm fucking out on that. Like, no thank you. I don't want that shit. I want the anxiety of growth and winning. <laughs> That's the kind of anxiety that drives me. That's the war I want to fight. And, and, I, and I love that war. Fucking A. We're not built for peace, bro. We're not. You're uh, absolutely right. We're built for chaos. But we got to yep. find our chaos in a good way. Yes, yes. So the war we fight is different now. This is the war for men's souls. Now, this did you have any uh, did you have any vices when you were a firefighter? Like, for example, or for instance, I know a lot of firefighters had a lot of drugs and drinking problem. 
Yeah, mine was pretty simple, bro. I was just mine was just porn and anger. I didn't ever fall in raised raised Mormon. I was I was kind of like protected to test those principles as a young age. And so like I learned at a young age that that shit and then I watched my friends all through high school fuck their lives up. So I was like I got lucky to see that early. But I was in it. I saw it. I watched them all fall. And I was right there with them. I didn't I didn't really get get along much with the church kids. Like I was in a punk band and shit and skateboarder. And so, you know, when my when the guys I was with were were doing whatever the fuck they were doing, I was just making sure everybody was breathing. So different perspective. But I saw what that shit does. And then as a fireman, I saw what it really does. But what firemen you- are fucked up too, dude. Firemen drinking is fucking, that's the go-to, bro. To just numb that shit. I see. I know. I, I have friends who are firefighters. I had one that poor guy, he, uh, he, he somehow he turned it around, man. But the dude was basically, they should have took him off the, the job. He was drinking so much. Eventually he fucking blacked out, crashed into some cars and, he was some deep shit. Worked for the San Francisco Fire Department, but he, uh, they helped him out, man. They put him to rehab, got him, get him, got him right. You know, his his people helped him out, and it's sad. And I know it's because that's why I ask you, like, you guys see some traumatic shit. I had a friend who works in the Tenderloin District. Nothing. He does. This, he doesn't even answer no fire calls. It's all fucking ODs from Fedno. I don't know. You know, if the Tenderloin in San Francisco, it's it's fucking hell over there. Lots of death and yep. lots of ODs. That's all he's doing is pumping Narcan all day in people. Some make yep. it. A lot don't. That's all his job is. Bro, that's a fucked up life. Like, they, you can't do that without having some fucking backlash on your life, bringing that home to your kids and your family, dude. It's... <laughs> Damn. If people like, ain't new, like, they think they have it hard, like, and they think, oh, fireman's just a, such a glorious job. Not of 2024, man. A lot of times, they're answering very little fires. It's more ODs. And... Yep. Places like Los Angeles, San Francisco. Where do you live right now? Where, where were you from? San Diego. Oh, uh, so see, San Diego. A lot of fucking ODs out there too, man, all over the streets. And to see people dropping like flies left to right, it does something to the psyche, man. I don't care how tough you are. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, the cool thing is, is like, I needed that shit. Otherwise, I, I, like, I wouldn't know what's at stake. I wouldn't understand, you know? I'd be one of these guys that's like, what's the big deal? You know, life's pretty good, dude. Why is everyone all, what's everyone all angry about? That's the one people I love with people are like, man, why are you all intense all the time? Because I've fucking seen it for years. That's why. That's why I'm intense all the time. Because it fucking matters. And it matters to me that, that, that these guys are just throwing their fucking lives away. And then the children, the kids are getting fucked up by their dads. What happens behind closed doors is so much worse than anybody possibly imagines, because everybody has that fucking perfect mask on outside when they see their neighbor. Hey, neighbor. And this is the guy who has the nice car and the nice house. We ain't even talking about rough areas. It's fucked. So on the outside, yeah, everything's fine. Every like man how, has darkness. I like how Every. you preach that, especially to the kids. A lot of kids don't. It's fucked up the way some kids, they don't ask for it but they're born into that life and if they're born into a life with addictive parents and they see their parents going through it what do you think it's going to become of them yep you know i i have some of my ads i put out are pretty aggressive and i'm calling guys out and i just get hate but just hate 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 they also perform very fucking well because the guy who hears it has a fucking muzzle in his mouth so i'm not talking to these pussies who are offended because they feel offended because I call them fat. I'm talking to the guy who's about to kill himself. Or the guy who's on the road to. Or the guy that treats his wife and his kids like shit. Because for some reason, he's filled with darkness and he can't figure it out. He can't put two and two together. And he keeps getting fatter. And he keeps drinking more. And he ain't having any sex with his wife. And he's fucking miserable. Even though on the outside, everything looks great. That's how, who I'm talking to. I'm talking to guys like us, high-performing high motherfuckers that want to win who aren't winning and aren't doing anything to win, and they're actually regressing. When you take a guy that is, like, driven, 
and you take his fire away, you take his balls, clip his wings, that guy might as well already be dead. That's the motherfucker I'm talking to because that guy's miserable. And everybody thinks just because, oh, he has a nice car, the nice house, and look at him. He's winning maybe a beautiful wife and kids. Furthest from the truth, homie. That's a goddamn lie. Like you said, once that door closes, it's a different world. Treating your wife like shit. Yep. No intimacy. You're a fucking asshole to your kids. You know what I'm saying? You're drinking you're like nonstop in front of your kids, in front of your wife. Not giving two shits whatsoever. I know. I'm going through this too with a family member right now. I want to, I can't say it on here, but I wanted to, you know, stop treating your kids like that, man. You know what I'm saying? I know what's going on, you know? It pisses yep. me off. It's like, dude, do you know what you're doing to your kids, man? I asked them, do you want your kids to become like you? That's the example you want to set? What happens if your, your daughter and your son become like you? Are you going to be fucking proud that you created that? Because that's what you're going to create. You know what I'm saying? And that, yep. I like that you call those people out. I need to call those people out more, actually. Go harder on their necks. Yeah, because we got we got to wake them up. And and the only way they wake up is to get shocked, to wake up. They got to hear a message that, like, hits them in the fucking heart enough so they feel for just a fucking moment. Because they've been past feeling for so many years, they haven't let themselves feel anything. And then being married to one of these dudes who feels nothing? How are you going to have a marriage where the dude's unwilling to feel anything, blocking out everything? Not even human. Fucking walking zombie. With no heart. Hiding. And it's fake. And it's lying. It's, cr it's crazy that they blame everybody but themselves. They don't look in the mirror and be like, you know what? This is on me. I'm fucking up. I'm causing this. No one else. It's, 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 it boggles my mind how they don't want to take accountability. You know what I mean? It, it makes me angry too. Trust me. I want to snap on them. Yep. And, and, we, and, and why? And here's the craziest part. Why do we do this? Because we fucking love them. We want to help you. That's it. And we're willing to say and do whatever the fuck it takes to give you a chance. Period. There's some motherfuckers out here that will say and do whatever it takes to wake you up. And we're going to be the most hated motherfuckers on the planet. But for the guys that listen, we will save their lives and change their entire world and the trajectory of their family forever. Breaking generational curses. We're soldiers, man. That's what we're here to do. We're here to lead the pack. And I like what you said earlier, like, you could go through the to schooling. You could get a degree. You could become a therapist. But if you ain't gone through the shit, wh wh how can you relate to that person? How can you empathize if you ain't been in the shit? You ain't been in that darkness. You ain't swam in it. You don't know what it's like. Okay, yeah, you know the textbook stuff, but you ain't been in it. So how the fuck are you going to help me? That's why I think people need to stop realizing. We're not just physically. I think people look at coaches and think it's just about macros and fitness. No, it's deeper than that. It's way deeper than that. That's, that's the other part to it. The part to it is fixing you from within to find out what's really going on inside of you. And like you said, facing that, ready to face that head on and say, you know what? Fuck this. You don't define me. I'm going to win. That's what people yep. don't realize. It's deeper than just fitness. Yeah, fitness is a great hook to get, get a guy to move because he wants to feel powerful. So you say, hey, man, let's get you ripped. And, he, and it's a great hook to get a guy who's feeling like shit, who's like, man, maybe I'll feel better if I get ripped. And it's not the fact that he gets ripped that he feels better. It's because he starts putting some fucking discipline in his life, and he starts doing some hard shit. He starts putting systems in place. He starts sacrificing his comfort. And then what's the result? A fucking jack body. <laughs> That's the result. That ain't what makes you on fire. What makes you on fire is what it takes to get there. And then you put that into your marriage, put that into your business, and then you lean into God just as hard, then shit starts to get real. That's where the fire's found. That's where a guy now borrows your fire and becomes the fire. And that, then you send him on his way and let him go light up the world. You create another soldier. But it all starts with the body. Like, dude, if a dude can't get out of bed and go to the gym, like, if, and he's like, oh, tomorrow, and he can't do it, like, you're not going to have a successful marriage, period. You're not. You're also going to be an overreactive father because you can't just you can't even control the food in your mouth. Like, you can't do that shit. That's the basics. I will, I will say, too, even guys who are crushing it, who can't get their fitness right, who are crushing in business, are literally shooting themselves in the foot because if they would actually get discipline in that area, their business would absolutely explode.
because the fire that would they would bring in leadership to their teams and the fire that they would the vision they would start to see and their ability to take it to the just a hundred times that shit that's why leonidas is jack bro like they wouldn't have followed him if he was a fat fuck like no no one's following fat leonidas into battle dude how many people did that movie by the way 300 is bar that got all of us fucking motivated like holy shit look at these fucking army of 300 men were jacked ready for combat war how badass was that movie though i mean let's talk about that that's what i that's one of my goals man I, it's my vision i want to manifest that. i just told my client downstairs i want to say man i want to build an army of jack dudes so let's like 20 or 30 of us take our shirts off like look take your fucking shirt off like proud men like look at what we did because it ain't easy it's hard not everybody could do this not everybody's going to do this we're going to save the ones that want to be saved not everybody's going to be saved, unfortunately. I wish we could save everybody, but we can't. Yep. That, that, the craziest thing is, like, that, that brings up a, an argument all the time where people are like, well, Jesus did save me. And I'm like, yeah, I get it, bro. Yeah, you're saved. Congratulations. Um, but we're going to go to the front, and we're going to be partners in this war. And, and, and then you can sit back there, do whatever you're going to do. Like I, I tell my guys, I go, okay, you got, you got the um, the Greek army that are all like gardeners and blacksmiths, right? Then you got the the um, the Spartan army, badasses, hard dudes. Then you got the fucking three hundred, and it's like, Special where forces. do you, yeah, where do you want to lie in this game of life? There ain't no man who's not gonna be like, eh, I kind of want to be in there, kind of want to be in there. And then there's like, you want to be fucking Leonidas? I want to be fucking Leonidas. That's, that is my desire. I want to build myself to that shit, that level. I've got a long fucking way to go, but that's the, that's the star. That's a superhuman father, bro. Facts. Real facts. You know who inspired me as a kid, man? Them that's on my mind. What movie inspired me was Conan that Barbarian. Remember he was a little kid pushing the wheel? <laughs> Then he grew up yeah, to this jack dude. Yeah. That, I swear to God, I looked up to him. I said, I'm going to be a jack dude like him when I was a kid. Watch this. Yeah. That's what got me to lift the weights. I said, I do not want to be average. I want to be like that guy, a fucking warrior. That fucking movie inspired me so much, man. It's crazy. His dad watch it. It gives me goosebumps. I love it. I had that on VHS recorded from TV. We watched that shit constantly. And then Red Sonja came out. Oh, yeah. You got Red Sonja, and he, he makes a, sh a showing in that one. You're like, oh, shit, there's another one. And then there was like Conan the Barbarian and... And there was another Conan. I think there's your OG Conan. I was yeah, I was all all obsessed with Conan. Fucking WWF, Hulk. The Ultimate Warrior. Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Was one of my if Ultimate was probably my favorite. I liked his physique. Yeah, I like Hulk too. Hulk Hulk was one of mine, but Ultimate Warrior was a different animal. Like I love his body because yeah. he came from the bodybuilding world, and I was always yeah, in the yeah, bodybuilding yeah. in the '90s. Yeah, man. I don't know, dude. I just think like, who the fuck? doesn't want to live jacked i just don't understand it bro like, i don't get it it's like it's the best feeling and like you said something earlier i want to hit on it when you flip somebody like an entrepreneur a a, a a business owner a leader of his team you flip him and you turn him into a whole new man not only does he have the energy to fucking lead his team and look up to him bro now you get a different level of respect from other entrepreneurs and other business people who want to be in business with you like i want to be in business with that guy he looks like he gets shit done look at him i love his energy his frequency his frequency is high I don't care if you yep. got money. If your frequency's down here, yeah, you're rich. So what? You're still busted. You're still a busted kind of beans. Straight up. Yep. I don't care if you got all that money. You still ain't look like this. Let's see you look like this. Yeah, why, why not do it all, man? Like, why, why are we putting limits on ourselves? Because I like my drink and my num-nums. It's like, like, if you had two guys next to each other and you're like, hey, man, I can snap my fingers and make you look like one or the other. Like, there ain't no man on this planet that's going to pick the fat guy. Danny DeVito? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, they're going to pick the jacket. Well, I would choose that one. I ask these guys on my sales calls all the time. Which one would you choose? I go, so it's the work required that makes you not want to do it? And they're like, oh, man, I never really thought of it. I was like, so you're too pussy to do the work. You, you want it, but you're unwilling to do what is required to get what you want. Doesn't that sound like depression, anxiety, and misery to you? I want this. But I'm unwilling to do what is required to get what I want, which means I'm giving up on life. Wow, that sucks. That is a painful place to live. 
Fuck that. Man, you ain't lying. I don't know why people, like I said, I wish we could just sell this feeling in a bottle or, or, or here you go, snap our finger, you could look like this. But this is what I tell people is, listen, you'll appreciate going through that work. You'll appreciate the grind. Because when you get, I tell people this, look at yourself now and imagine you look at yourself like a year from now and you look in the mirror and go, holy fuck, bro, we did it. Look at us. We fucking changed. We did the work instilled in us and we got through the process and look at us now. That's what I tell people. Look, don't worry about the in-between. That's, that's part of it. But look at the end result, which you can get to. And you could be so proud of yourself. Like, wow, we accomplished this. That only 1% of society can accomplish. 1%. That's it. And for us, it's even lower than 1% in our age group. I don't even know what the stats are. Go outside. Go find yeah, me a jack, dude. I'll wait. I'll walk to the grocery stores. Even in the gym, these kids half my age ain't even jacked. They might be big, but they're fat buffed. They're not diced. You know what I'm saying? It's a different ball game. Low body fat. Mm-mm, very rare. Very rare, bro. And, and, and being rare is, is an epic thing. Being rare epic. is an amazing thing. Because when you're like, like all, dude, all the good, all the partnerships we built, me and my wife will go to an event or something. And it doesn't even surprise us anymore. We, we sit down, whoever the king is at that event, he's going to come sit by us. We're going to get to know each other. And I told my wife, I go, if we were not physically fit, nobody would give a fuck to even talk to us. And somebody could say, well, that's shallow. It's shallow if you're stupid. But what people understand is what it takes to build that shit. And so they're looking at what it took to get there. So they're, and, and high-level people are always looking for other high-level people. And then when they talk to you, they're, trying to, they're assessing if you're just a fucking dumb gym dude or if you have some pieces to you but initially they're like i'm interested and then when they talk to you and you come out with just you authentic truth not trying to prove anything not needing anything not 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 one of these needy fucks trying to like get on somebody's nuts and you're just like i'm good the way i am it's very nice to meet you but i don't fucking need you it's like oh they're like fucking real people real people that are doing shit that are disciplined okay fuck i think i can trust these people that would be amazing to have another person in my life I can trust because in reality, it's rare to really have people in your life you can trust. Not because they're not good people, but because they're fucking weak. And they'll fold the second things get fucking hard because they live in complacency and comfort their whole life. So as soon as the heat get turned up, fucking panic attack, they'll be on their heels. They're gone. Gone. I told my wife that. I said, listen, there's a lot of men, and she didn't believe me, and you, you can attest this. How many men will go through the fire for their wife, and how many men will run from adversity and leave their wife hanging on the front line? Let's be honest. How many will run and leave her hanging high and dry instead of protecting her? Lots. Yep. I hate to say moment. it, it's sad. Because that decision has to be made prior to, and that decision isn't made just up here. That decision's made with how you act and your habits put in place over years preparing for hard fucking moments. And if you have not been through hard shit, you will fold. And if you haven't been through hard shit, you need to put yourself daily through hard shit so that you won't. It's, it's hard when you live in a society where everything's just handed to you and it's easy and comfortable beds and warm showers and all the food that you want. We don't have to hunt for our fucking food. We don't have to be fucking savages anymore. We can just be people pleasing little titty having bitches. And, uh, like, milk out, just become a milk boy, and get all soft, and you're fine. You're not going to get eaten. So then we just get weak. See it in the firehouse. Guys just get, they'll go to a slow station. They get super fat. They stop working out. And they, they, you see them, and you're just like, bro, you're, your arms lost, like, three inches, and your gut gained a foot. You're like, but they're like, ah, eh, well, this place is slow. We, we're not going to get a fire, and I'm retiring in five years anyway, so... What's the problem? Then, then you get a fire and you watch this guy puke in his mask. And the great firemen, the, the biggest death of firemen, heart attacks. Heart attacks. Biggest de because, the, dude, you put all that gear on and then you, you, start, you get hot and then you start doing work and you're out of shape, you will fucking die. Older dude, that ticker can't handle that shit. No. Mm -mm. I know. Harder than a cop. Even you see fat ass cops. You're like, dude, you're not even built for this job. But a fireman, you got to carry your 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 rig, your tank, and the oxygen mask, and that heavy clothes, and you got to go up and fly stairs. 
or carry that hose. God forbid you got to bring that hose up. Ooh, good luck. Dude, good it, luck it, with that. Even if, you, even if you're in shape and you put your gear on and you haven't trained in gear for a while, you'll have a fucking panic attack. You'll feel claustrophobic and pull your mask. Like, th this is just e exposure to discomfort on a daily basis for regular humans because yeah we're talking about firemen going into fires but in reality in real life the fire is coming for you and your family shit is coming hard shit's coming financially um relationship emotionally some some physical shit fucking stroke out of nowhere like that shit is coming Thanks. and if we ain't prepared for it like it's gonna eat us alive we're just gonna melt I want to be prepared for whatever shit's coming. And not only do I want to be prepared, I want to lead when everybody else is running. Like I, I want to be in a position to be able to see straight, think straight when shit's going down so I can actually be a fucking man and a father to my family. But you got to train for that. You can't sit in comfort your whole life and expect to do anything when shit gets hard. Man, that's very... I hope you guys, I hope you guys that are listening to this take that. Take what he just said. You got to be ready for battle because it's coming. One thing or one, something is coming. We don't know what, but something is coming and you better be ready for it. Because if you're not, ooh, I feel bad for you. You're well, going to break. One last, one last thing on this, bro. Like, think about this. You've been married for, how long you been married? Going on 10 years. Okay, so 10 years of marriage. Ups and fucking downs. Yes. And you've been through a lot of shit. So now that things are good, it's still fucking hard. And, and we got this ego and there's hard conversations to have. And we have, we, we, we get lit up and emotional in a very basic shit. Like we could be arguing over fucking what's for dinner and then it'll turn into some big stupid fight. We're all mad at each other. I'm like, what a bitch. Like I still am sometimes like I'll start getting a little poo face and get like my feelings hurt. And I'm like, that voice in my head is like, look at you, you little crybaby bitch. You're doing it again. But you have to build the resolve to sit in discomfort, not just physically. The physical discomfort helps you with the emotional discomfort. So now I have to go to my wife and have an uncomfortable conversation with her. Maybe I got to tell her something honest that is going to humiliate me. If I want to sit as an authentic man in this world and I'm not perfect, I'm going to have to say things that are very uncomfortable to stay in authenticity and stay in alignment. That shit is trained by doing hard shit every day. Because one of the hardest things that a man can do is tell the truth. And if you can't tell the truth, you can't lead, bro. You got to be an honest man. If you don't have values that you follow, like, you're missing out on the whole point of life. That's so true right there. You got to humble yourself sometimes. Sometimes when you fuck up, you got to... You got to take it on the chin and step up. But like, you know what, babe? I fucked up. My bad. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that or do that. You know, it's hard. We got ego. We got pride as men. But sometimes you, you got to suck it up, you know? You got to kick your ego to the curb yeah. and just make peace. I'd rather do a leg day than fucking do that shit. Yeah. I'd rather go kill myself at the gym. You're right. I got a yeah, quick question easy. for you, though. I'm going to just turn it to a different conversation. So, Wes Watson was your business coach? Yep. Okay. Yep. So he's in the media a lot right now. He's in the media a lot because he kind of went off on a dude. A lot of people felt that he lost his composure, called the dude out on stage on the Fresh and Fit podcast. So now, I was talking to you earlier, now he's all on these different podcasts and everybody's saying he's a fraud, he's this, he's that. His program's fake. He's a, you know, what do you think? You're, you're one of his clients. Is he a fraud? Is I he the truth? I love that man so much. I've never met a more honest man in my life. And Wes motherfucking Watson. Um, that guy's got, got more love in his heart than you could possibly imagine. And in fact, when he got on that stage and said that shit, I, listen, that's an authentic dude right there. Like, he spoke his truth. And we can say whatever the fuck we want about our opinion of authentic truth, but there is a lack of people that fearlessly speak how they feel. And we need more of it. Yeah. And here's, and here's the deal. That dude was overweight, and he was broke. So why couldn't he just say, yeah, I got to work on that shit? I mean, that's how I lived my life. I get called out on some shit. I'm like, yeah, but but people people con consistently go back to this thing where they're like, 
I just need my family. And it's like, well, you need, but what does your family need from you? And like, you are literally the greatest gift you could give to your family. So why don't we build ourselves into this leader that leads by example in all areas to lead our family? And I didn't, I ain't got no black, bad blood against the guys he was talking to. I, I, I just understand that emotions were high and it's real easy to be defensive, especially when you're in front of people because it's real hard to tell the truth. Like, like I said, like the truth would be like, yeah, I've been working on that and I'm struggling with it. And then, and then it's, then the beef is done, right? I don't know, man. I, the reason why I hired Wes in the first place is because I wanted that level of truth from my coach. I want that. I want, uh, I want my coach to tell me right to my face where I'm weak, where I'm winning, where I'm fucked up, where I'm not, where I can do better. That's a blessing to the world. And I will always be gravitated towards people like that. All my coaches I've ever had have been truth-telling motherfuckers that will make you very uncomfortable. Those are the best coaches, man. We don't share coach shit. I'm not, I tell all my clients I'm not here to be your fucking cheerleader. So you lost a few pounds. Okay, cool. Keep going. We're not going to celebrate. You lost 20 pounds. All right, keep going. 30? Keep going. We're not done yet. Journey's not done. Job's not finished. Keep going. You know, I'm the same way. And, yeah, a lot of people might look at us hard asses this and that, but we have to be truthful, man. We have to be honest. Like you said, we got to tell the truth. And, and, and I, dude, I look at guys, people's hearts. Like, I, I, what, are, what are people's intentions? What are, what is, what's their heart? That's all I care about. We're all imperfect. Did, did what, what Wes say the, the best tactful way to deal with that? I don't know. Uh, probably not, because none of us are perfect. We're never going to do it perfect. But I don't give a fuck. What I give a fuck is authenticity and honesty. That's it. Like, all the rest of the shit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coach different than other people, and they're going to coach different than me, and I'm going to have different tactics and ways I was raised and different ways of seeing different things. And... In the end, does this guy give a fuck? Is he real? And does he tell the truth? I'm all in. 100% support. That, uh, because his messaging is harsh, and he calls people out, and it hurts them deep, and they get angry about it because they know it's the truth. Like that dude that he was calling out. 10-inch arms, fat gut, man boobs. Come on. He's telling the truth. Like, you know what? You got me there. Instead, he's sitting there yeah. trying to argue. Oh, this, that. I just need my family. Well, <laughs> brother, how are you going to lead your family looking like that? Just saying. Yep. And, and um, like I said, I love that guy. I don't even know him. I want him to win. I want him to feel his best. And, uh, and, and the world needs, needs Wes Watson. They need that way of speaking because there are certain people that will only listen to that message that way. Yeah. And, 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 and in reality, like, can we just stop being so fucking sensitive and, and defensive all the time? And can we look at what this guy did and what he's been through and what built him? Because when yeah. he's on the up and up, guess what? Everyone's like, good job, bro. You got out of prison and you're, you're doing good. We yes. support you. Then he's on top and he's fucking king and he's winning. And now everyone's trying to chop his legs out. And the same guy that is now talking from the top said the same shit at the bottom. But at the bottom, it was cool. And at the top, now it's not? Yeah. Same mess. Yeah. You're right about that. And now that he's doing financially better, he's on a different level whatever you want to call it. Now people are angry about that. Oh, now you're this, now you're that. Why? He's winning. You guys seem to fucking forget this guy was in a prison six years ago, man, with no plan or nothing. Look at him now. What he's accomplished in a short amount of time is short of fucking amazing, you know? He's a living testimonial, man. I've been to prison. Not too many. Not everybody comes out and kills it like him. Rare. That's a rare, that's a rare gem right there, man. Trust me, rare. The only guys that come out of prison usually that kill it, they come back out and they start selling drugs again, do it the illegal way. The way he did it, nah. That's rare as fuck. I mean, he changed my life and my family's trajectory forever and, and now thousands on the, his wake. So I don't yeah. give a fuck about the hate or the criticism. Um, no. I, I just appreciate him as a human, what he's done and how, how he's had the balls to do it. And I, I love what God created, that fucking unstoppable wrecking ball. That comes in and makes you look at yourself in a way that no one else can. So true, man. So true. Well, brother, I'm going to wrap this up. 
we got to do a part two, man, because uh, this was deep, man. I like I like what you had to say, and uh, it's real shit, man. You know, you're not sure of coding it. You're not trying to be something you're not. We're not even here talking about selling programs. We're just talking about being ourselves and what we can do and service people. Whether we make money or not, as long as we could change one fucking life or help somebody from jumping off the ledge, we did our duty. Uh, yeah, I always said, man, from my mansion, Rancho Santa Fe, or from the, the gutter in Oceanside, I'm going to be doing the same shit every day. Either way, I'm good. I love my fucking life. Keep killing it, brother. Keep killing it. You're doing good. I watch you. I see you. So we'll talk soon, huh? Thanks, bro. Appreciate you. Thank you for coming on the podcast, man. Shout out to my boy Kyle, man. Superhuman fathers, brothers. This guy's the man right here, man. Saving one life at a time. Peace. Peace.